Do you wanna see a big wee beastie? I say big because it's powerful and I say we because it fits in my craft room. Xtool sent me their CO2 laser. This is the Xtool P2 and it is wow worthy. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Sarah. I do not review equipment for a living. This is a working studio. I am a crafter. I like to do instead of talk. So that is what this video is going to be. If you wanna see this tool in action, hang on. Let's talk about a couple of things. This is a pretty easy setup, however you do need two people. I also had to set this up by myself, and what that setup was, honestly, y'all, this is not an unboxing video, and the reason is is because I literally followed the booklet that came with the machine. If you like videos, they have a QR code. Follow the video. It's very simple to set up. So I'm going to show you the inside and what makes this complete as a CO2 laser. We've got this tube, we fill with distilled water and antifreeze in a combination, and it will fill this up to cool the laser. The entire unit is fully enclosed with Xtools. Focus on safety. Every single one of my pieces is a fully enclosed laser. You do have to just do a nice little quick pulse test with a little bit of masking tape just to see uh, where or if you need any adjustments. I needed a very tiny adjustment on one of my mirrors and look at that. We are set to go. I'm going to put this little cover on so everybody keeps their eyeballs and now I want to show you about my setup. So I don't think this is talked about enough. This is a 55 inch table but more importantly down here there is a brace. The reason you need the brace is because this thing can start wiggling a little bit. A lot of people use the Husky table but I like this one because I have S1 room on that side and um, P2 on this side with my most used materials. In the back here, I am venting into a six inch inline fan through blast gates. Now, you, if you only have one laser, you don't need the splitter, you just have one instead of two. This is the X Tool inline fan, and I really like it. I purchased it, and I also purchased the splitter from this guy, Chase, over at Strung Over Creations. I have it taped under there just in case people ask. And then Amazon for the win on these four inch blast gates and the blast gate that moves everything outside. All right, no more chit chat. Let's burn some stuff. So my first tests were wood. And the reason is, is because I work with it a lot. You can see this was an engraving test that burned right through. So always stay near your machine. I make sure everything is level and flat before moving on. I did a whole bunch of wood cut tests, wood engraving tests, and I'll just show you these right out of the machine. Your machine's going to be a little bit different than mine, but you can see this gives me a perfect idea of what settings I need to run. Look at this. No char. I, I'm really impressed so far, but now to CAD. We call CAD's cardboard aided design in my house because cardboard is great. I use the XCS software, which is the free no subscription required software that runs this laser. And I did two different designs. I figured out which one was stronger by using an inexpensive material like cardboard. And it was really easy for me to transfer this design directly over to basswood straight out of the machine you can see this i like it i'm not it's not perfect because i hate extra work so you can see where my air assist blew back a little bit of char everywhere the laser turned so i gotta dial in some settings we tried the same thing with walnut i did all my tests i made something very big into something very small to see if i could get detail now speaking of detail i'm gonna blow through a couple of these projects just to give you ideas on what this thing can do charcuterie board with the default settings score and engrave on garbage wood from the dollar tree look at that detail so fine it's so thin and then of course i had a Bill and Ted's excellent adventure movie night. So we needed silverware for that. I'm just saying. Super quick to do on my P2. I love slate and I love running tests on slate because there's so many colors that you can get. Now there are two 16 megapixel cameras in this machine. Hey, look, I, I didn't use them when I designed this one, but I redeemed myself on the second one. But uh, you can see the beige on the left and the gray on the right. Oh, I love Slate. This machine handles it well. 
I also had to try some Ceramark coated stainless steel stuff and because I already had it for my diode lasers it did a good job uh, on the recommended settings this is what I got for a bar necklace yeah and then I got angry and then this is what I got Ooh. I dialed in my settings and messed up the placement so I've got a little bit more work to do when it comes to jewelry and this machine but I'm trying so I'm going to show you this straight out of the machine without any editing this looks amazing this is two passes of the metal business card these are so great to sell so I wanted to play with some felt projects this year in 2024, uh, iPad cases, eyeglass cases. So I picked up some three millimeter felt, created an SVG for an eyeglasses case, easily came up with settings for that. I also went through and burned some settings for engraving, designed right inside of XCS, a quick monogram to put on that you can see it's a little better in this shot here and then all I did to assemble seriously uh pin it in half here and then just sew mostly a straight line mine's not quite exact but uh you just sew a line you're done that is a good product all right I have to show you the Apple watch bands are insanely great when they come from a good vendor. Do not sleep on the X tool materials. Go to the shop, look at the materials. This is the black engrave Apple watch band. This is straight out of the machine. There we go. And this, I, I cleaned it up with a little Dawn power wash and a paper towel right next to my computer. <laughs> I did white and pink and look at this detail. It's insane. Hey, you want to, um, do you want to make some acrylic things? Okay, good. Me too. So I could never cut this particular color on my diode laser. So of course I went straight into this color. It is an amazing buttery edge. Look at that. I have a lot of plants. So I remade some plant stakes I made with the S1. This thing cuts so beautifully. Look at the edges there. And yes, another plant stake, but this one is engraved. So it's different. And I'm showing you that it's different. All right, next up clear acrylic, because why not? Can never cut it with anything else. I made an entire set of constellation earrings. Let me know if you want them. My daughter is obsessed. So I engraved and cut these. It's kind of hard to show how pretty they are uh, because they're clear, but these are gorgeous in person. I couldn't be done with some kid related projects. So I grabbed a quick file off of Creative Fabrica, added a customization axolotl on there, and then made a couple more involved pieces like this rainbow for a nursery and this mirror acrylic cake topper. I love this 3M on the back of this thing. Clear over, under the mirror acrylic makes this food safe. Never put mirror acrylic directly on food. Speaking of more mirror acrylic, I love it. This is the X Tool Royal Blue. Look at this. So pretty on the back. The gray is how it comes. The other is engraved. Look how perfect this is. Love it. Okay, so we also had to make 647 Stanley toppers for my daughter and her friends. We scored, we engraved, we cut, and then look at this ripple water acrylic. It's textured. Again, X tool for the win on this acrylic. Go to the shop. <gasps> my favorite project is next. And it's got a little bit of subliminal messaging. Can you figure it out? Yeah, this is a 3D fully functioning hinged candy box with a play button and uh, the word subscribe. This was uh, a really fun project that I absolutely messed up the first time and figured it out on the second one. Let me know if you want that tutorial. So I do want you to subscribe to the channel because I am somebody who believes that all of the functions are only as good if you can use them. Speaking of how we use this stuff, Xtool is constantly innovating and their software just got a major update. We're in beta testing right now for this, but I want to give you a little sneak peek. All of their software has amazing documentation that you can go anywhere to learn support. You can go to their blog, you can get tips and tutorials. So I'm going to open it and show you that this is in beta. It's XCS X tool creative space 2.0. When you open it, you have some recommended projects by machine. So if you have one machine versus another, you can just quickly create a project. It does have MySpace, which is um, an online like cloud storage 
for your projects and then it has this x tool project section if you don't know what to make but know you want to spend you know saturday afternoon with your laser just come on in here choose a project it's really a lot of uh, motivation for us to get started you can create a new project or open so i was really curious i was working on this um really fun big dragonfly file it takes a minute to open the file and you can see it brings in everything now i have three canvases for this you can see all of the details are over here on the left if you hit the name of the canvas you will open up the other sheets within this file so you can see my original which is really big for acrylic you can see my testing file for all of my woods and acrylics and then you can see the smaller wood version that i cut out yesterday so you can uh, go to your settings right here on the top, and this is for XCS. So if you wanna work in millimeters or you wanna work in inches, there's a whole lot of options over here. Once you connect your device, so I'll connect this one via USB, you have a couple more options that come up. The first is your device settings, and if you already have an Xtool device, you may wanna go in here and check your settings. I did have to adjust a couple things like this, background brightness increase, and I also had to scroll down and change my engraving back down to 30%. All right, once those are saved, now it's time to fiddly diddle. I have the slats open, I'm choosing basswood, and I'm going to auto measure or quick measure. I'm just going to pop a little um, measuring thing here. I'm going to show you on these files because it's a little bit easier to see. I'm going to auto measure this wood again. So you'll see it's going to put 3.6, I think, for this. There you go. And now when I click on this, we get a whole nother menu over here to the right hand side. We have a processing type, score, engrave, and cut. And because it says reference here, not user defined, the X tool parameters are gonna automatically load for you. Now this is great. You can actually click on this picture right here and you can choose what do you like best? Do you like a really light engraving, a really dark engraving, a combination? And so once you click something, it will auto load those settings in. All right, so we've got everything loaded here. I'm gonna hit process and I'm gonna show you this little message up here to the left will only be the first time. It will show you the laser trajectory um, so you can plan. Once you hit start in the software, hit start on your machine. You can see it's gonna take less than five minutes. Now, if this is going too fast, do not worry. Subscribe to the channel. I always share the settings that I'm using. I always share the steps to do the software and to finish a project out. I'm also going to be sharing the riser base and conveyor that just arrived today, and I'm super excited. All right, we are to the portion of the program where I say what I would change or anything that I'm having problems with, anything that I'm having problems figuring out with the Xtool P2. I don't have a long list. That's great, and I want to say this with a caveat. Xtool is probably the best laser brand who listens to their users and then takes that feedback and innovates with it. I feel the honeycomb is an afterthought. And the reason I feel the honeycomb is an afterthought is because it's not set up very well. I know that I will figure it out. I've had the machine for a month and only had a, the honeycomb for one week, but it has been a very big point of frustration, not only in how it's designed, but but how it actually works. The reason behind what I'm saying is the surface area of the honeycomb is laserable, meaning the frame of the honeycomb is actually laserable. Number two, my material, if it is 12 inches tall, does not sit in the honeycomb. It sits on the frame of the honeycomb. Now, that to me is a design fail, absolutely. It just seems that's what makes me think that this piece was added afterward. If I were to change one thing, it would be the honeycomb. That is honestly my biggest source of frustration. I am going to look for a hack because people smarter than me have likely already come up with a hack. So I uh, will do that after this video. Number two, the initial kit you purchase should absolutely come with mirrors and lenses. So what I mean by that is 
This is a cleaning that requires you to remove essential components. The mirrors and the lenses, mostly the mirrors, can be dropped. They can be easily scratched. They can be damaged and no longer work. Which tells me that if this consumable piece of the laser is easily damaged, then it should come with a backup. I don't mind paying for that backup. Obviously, I'm going to be ordering my own little backup set, but because those consumables are easily damaged and we have to remove them for cleaning, I just feel that having an extra set in the initial purchase of the machine is a good idea. My final one I'm sure isn't just me, and that is the setup of the fan system in the back of the P2 and the power of that fan is subpar, but that fan does not cut it. And I don't know if it's because the way that it is designed with the venting over that fan, or if it's just the fan isn't strong enough. Either way, it's not a great setup. Now, as I mentioned, I got around that by using the inline fan and absolutely recommend it, especially if you're crafting inside a studio or your home. I just believe that that fan is, that fan setup is not it. And honestly, that's it. You can see my entire list. I had three items that I really don't like after using the P2 for a month. I know the honeycomb thing is very particular for those of us who work with smaller items, but it is something that is kind of annoying. Uh, and I will figure it out. I know I will. And again, I will figure out a hack or find a hack somebody else has already done. I hope this gave you a good look at what this laser can do in a craft setting, in a product creation setting. I am so very grateful Xtool sent me this machine. Having it in my studio is going to be a huge part of my 2024 business, and I hope that you join me for that. Please subscribe down below, ask me any questions that you may have, and if you're interested in the full review or checking out some specs, I'll put affiliate links down below. As always, thank you so much for being here.